The Mafia and its reputation have become entrenched in American popular culture and have been portrayed in movies, TV shows, books, and video games. The American Mafia continues to dominate organized crime in the United States and maintains control over much of Chicago's, Boston, Philadelphia, New Jersey, and New York City's organized criminal activity, as well as criminal activities in many other cities in the Northeast and across the country, such as Las Vegas and New Orleans. The Mafia had eventually expanded to 26 crime families nationwide in the major cities of the United States, with the center of organized crime based in New York and its surrounding areas. After many turf wars, the big three families ended up dominating New York. The Carroza family, the Romano family, and the Calvatitoro family. These families held underground conferences with other Mafia notables like Joe Porello from Cleveland and other gang leaders such as Al Capone. The Romano crime family is one of the big three families that dominates organized crime activities in the United States within the nationwide criminal phenomenon known as the Mafia or Costa Nostra. The family originated in the early 1920s with Gaetano Bucco serving as boss up until his murder in 1930. It was taken over by Tommy Carbone during the Cuneo War and led by him until his death in 1951. The family under Carbone was peaceful and low-key, concentrating their criminal activities in the Bronx, Manhattan, and New Jersey. The next boss was Tommy Spaceman Da Vinci, who turned the family around to become one of the most powerful families to sit on the commission. Da Vinci teamed up with the Carrozas and Cavalitoros to control organized crime in New York City. When Da Vinci stepped down, Angelo Salino gained control of the family. Salino was very secretive and soon became one of the most powerful members of the commission. He was arrested in the famous commission case of 1986, however, was found not guilty and returned to head up the organization. That was a button man under Da Vinci, but when uh, he stepped down and Salino took over, uh, I wanted more responsibility and I earned Salino's respect and I was able to uh, to rise within the ranks and did quite well. But don't let Salino's soft uh, demeanor fool you. The man was ruthless, but he was fair. He would listen to reason and loyalty was very important. If you were not loyal, well, <laughs> as they say, you wind up sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> For most of its history, the Romano family was reckoned as one of the most peaceful crime families in the nation. However, that changed when Salino named his son Greg the Ice Pick the underboss and successor. The Ice Pick later promoted one of his longtime partners, the current consigliere Justin Benny Eggs, to underboss. They instituted one of the bloodiest reigns in Mafia history, ordering virtually anyone who'd cross them to be murdered. The Ice Pick was arrested in 1991 and sentenced to life in prison. Several Romano wise guys, fearing for their lives, turned informant. The highest profile of these was Capo Jimmy Two Times Fagazi. Fagazi was named the temporary boss when the Ice Pick went to prison and became the first boss of a New York crime family to testify against the mob. This led to the arrest of the entire Romano family hierarchy with Crazy Eddie Stugatz and Corey DeChico, both capos, also becoming informants. Testimony from these informants nearly destroyed the family, with as many as half of its members incarcerated. Anthony the Undertaker Galgano was named by the commission to run the fractured family. The Calvatitoro crime family is one of the big three families that dominate organized crime activities in New York City as part of the Mafia. The Calvatitoro family has been nicknamed the Ivy League, and Rolls Royce of organized crime. They are rivaled in size only by the Carroza crime family and are unmatched in terms of power. They have generally maintained a varying degree of influence over many of the smaller mob families outside of New York, including ties with the Buffalo crime family boss Eduardo Silvio and Philadelphia crime syndicate Ricky the Chemist Gaetano. Originally in control of the waterfront on the west side of Manhattan, including the Fulton Fish Market, 
The family was run for years by the odd father, Vincent Bertolo, who feigned insanity by shuffling unshaven through New York's Greenwich Village, wearing a tattered bathrobe and muttering to himself incoherently. Although the leadership of the Cavalti Toro family seemed to have been in limbo after the death of Bertolo in 2005, they appeared to be the most organized family and still remain powerful. Unique in today's mafia, the family has benefited greatly from members following the Code of Omerta, while many mobsters from across the country have testified against their crime family since the 1980s, the Calvati Toro family has only had six members turn state's evidence in its history, including former underboss Tomasino Rigatoni. I'll tell you, the Bertolo, the way he ran things, he was very smart. He set the wheels in motion. We were very profitable. We could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any family, including the Carrozas. And even when Big Nick took over, kept things going like clockwork. Very few ever turned state's evidence. And if we ever find those sons of bitches that did, well, you know what happens, you know. What do they say? Dead men tell no tales. So there's a few loose ends they gotta take care of. But this family, everyone was close-knit. We all made money. And that's what the whole name of the game was, was to make money. It's capitalism. We just did it uh, a little bit different than your, uh, than your corporations or your normal corporations would do. <laughs> Eventually, after the death of Bertolo in 2005, former boss Big Nick Lucatelli once again took over the reins. Big Nick had great respect within the family and the other families and was a close friend of Tony the Tone Man Stabile of the Carosa family and at times was an advisor to old-timer Don Vito. Big Nick quickly stabilized things within the family and the Cavati Toros became the chief competition of the Carosa crime family. The Carosa family was one of the families that were founded in New York after the Cuneo War during the 1930s. For most of the next quarter century, it was a minor player in organized crime. Its most prominent member during this time was its underboss, Alberto Vieni, who would rise to infamy as the operating head of the underworld's enforcement arm, Murder, Inc. He remained to power even after Murder, Inc. was smashed in the late 1940s and took over his family in 1951, by all accounts after murdering the family's founder, Vincent Malaro. The rise of what became the most powerful crime family in America really began in 1967, when Vienni was assassinated while sitting in a barber chair at the Park Sheridan Hotel in Manhattan. Experts believe Vienni's underboss, Carlo Toscani, helped orchestrate the hit to take over the family. The family's fortunes grew through the 1970s and 80s when Toscani appointed his brother-in-law, Paulie Tolano, as boss upon his death. Tolano infuriated upstart capo Gaetanino Ambrosiano, who orchestrated Tolano's murder in 1985. In January 1986, Ambrosiano was acclaimed as the new boss of the Carosa family. Ambrosiano appointed childhood friend Brian the Bull Nolano as underboss and close friend Irish Bobby Jingles as consigliere. He promoted his brother-in-law, Sosa Di Lorenzo, and his wife's nephew, Joe the Juicer Gelato, to Capo. Then as a special favor, he also appointed Tony the Tone Man Stabile as a Capo to keep the old-timers happy. Known as Mr. A, unlike his colleagues, Ambrosiano made little efforts to hide his mob connections and was very willing to provide interesting sound bites to the media. Ambrosiano's home in Bridgewater, New Jersey, was frequently seen on television. Ambrosiano liked to hold meetings with family members while walking in public places so that law enforcement agents could not record the conversations. During the early turf wars, specifically the long dragged out Cuneo War during the 1930s to early 1950s, most of the smaller families didn't have the muscle or political power to survive. To avoid another one of these long, scorched-earth type of conflicts, 
at the suggestion of retired Romano boss Tommy Da Vinci, a nationwide commission was established. While each crime family operates independently, coordination is provided by the commission, which consists of the bosses of each of the strongest families. Currently, the most prominent members of the commission are Big Nick Lucatelli, Angelo Salino, and Guy Tanino Ambrosiano. Robert Robustelli, formerly of the Cavalditoro family, was boss of the Sergio family out of Pittsburgh and has a seat on the commission. Also occupying a seat is Babyface Carmelo, boss of the Gregorio family in Miami. Carmelo's notoriety comes from winning a long power struggle with former boss, the popular Gordo Chichi. The main objective of the commission was to resolve disputes between the families and avoid bloody conflicts between the families. However, mob leaders from the other families on the commission were still enraged at Ambrosiano for the Talano murder and disapproved of Ambrosiano's high-profile style. Ambrosiano's strongest enemy was Cincinnati crime family boss, the young Michael Altabello, who had the ear of Philadelphia crime boss Ricky the chemist Gaetano, who was no fan of Ambrosiano himself. The two allegedly conspired with Lambino crime family leader Paul Furio to put out a contract on Ambrosiano's life. But a car bomb meant for Ambrosiano instead killed his driver, soldier Bobby Italiano. I was given the contract to take out Ambrosiano. It was all set. He was coming out of this... Uh, restaurant down in the village and uh, as luck would have it the uh, timing mechanism on the explosive device was off and uh, Rosiano escaped unscathed because he was never in the car and the driver uh, Bobby Italiano winds up getting it so that's how that happened and uh, we were hoping I'd get the contract for uh, another shot at that guy but that never happened by all accounts, Gaetano was angling to become boss of all bosses and believed that Salino and Lucatelli would support him in the hit on Ambrosiano. However, when Ambrosiano survived, Salino and Lucatelli turned their backs on Gaetano. Without their support, Lambino and Altabello went into hiding. Gaetano's arrogance made him think he could salvage things, but Ambrosiano took advantage of the situation and had his crazy capo, Sosa Di Lorenzo, take out Gaetano. Ambrosiano quickly built the family into the most powerful crime family in the United States, and now was the boss of all bosses. Ambrosiano felt he was on top of the world. He was tried three times by federal and state officials, but was acquitted each time, earning him the nickname the Houdini Don. It turned out that the trials had been compromised by witness intimidation, jury misconduct, and jury tampering. Ambrosiano's flamboyance, however, proved to be his undoing. The FBI had managed to bug an apartment above his headquarters in the Coral Reef Social Club in Jersey City, New Jersey, where an elderly widow let mobsters hold top-level meetings. Ambrosiano was heard planning criminal activities and complaining about his underlings. In particular, he complained about Brian the Bull Nolano, portraying him as a mad dog killer. Nolano responded by turning state's evidence and testifying against Ambrosiano and other members of the family. On April 2, 2012, largely on the strength of Nolano's testimony, Ambrosiano and consigliere Irish Bobby Jingles were convicted on all charges and sentenced to life without parole. With Ambrosiano now in prison, control of the family passed not to the obvious choice, Tony Stabile, but to Sosa Di Lorenzo, whose sister was married to Ambrosiano. Allies of Stabile were thoroughly unhappy about the move, but Stabile kept his men in line and was kept on as Di Lorenzo's underboss. The Stabile faction remained displeased, believing that Di Lorenzo had inherited the role rather than earning it. Di Lorenzo did retain a degree of muscle to keep Stabile's allies in check, including the notorious crew run by Anthony Nino Gaggi. 
which was believed to have committed over 200 murders during Di Lorenzo's regime. It was not a time for the family to be embroiled in inner turmoil and argument, as the FBI had targeted the Carroza family as the easiest of the families to infiltrate. FBI tapes obtained from a bug planted in a lamp on Di Lorenzo's kitchen table caught him discussing illegal deals with his subordinates, and soon Di Lorenzo was up on a number of charges and faced with conviction. With Di Lorenzo in trouble, eventually the anger of a few stabile subordinates boiled over into a rebellion that would plunge the Carroza family into conflict. Always the opportunist, Angelo Salino, the boss of the Romano crime family, began stirring up unrest in the Carroza family, despite the protests of the other members of the commission, especially Big Nick Lucatelli. Salino's interference caused the various families of the commission to take sides, and the bloodiest conflict in mafia history was underway. There was bloodshed everywhere. All of the families were severely weakened and compromised. High-profile members were either murdered, like Joe the Cat Rizzo, Sonny Long, Eduardo Silvio, and Mikey Gaga. The others were sent to prison, like Joey the Juicer and Sosa Di Lorenzo. However, the most disturbing was the arrest of Dominic Dudu Cristelli. Cristelli was not only convicted of racketeering, but it was discovered he ran and starred in a pornography ring that involved 16 and 17 year old girls. With the families at war and the FBI cracking down, it looked as though the mafia as we know it would cease to exist, which brought along a new breed of gangster, a younger, tougher, more dangerous type, the new 21st century mob. <laughs> 